Three. But Jeff Green, he hey. He he was to me he was the X factor and MVP of this game. Look, me. listen again. What have I said all year? You need basically, Braun gonna be Braun. You got another All Star out there, Kevin Love. Now even though Jeff Green ain't no All Star, he played like one tonight. And you had two other guys who stepped up big. That for for the most part, when you look at it, they gave me their averages. They gave me their averages. The people who played gave me their averages for yeah. the most part. Yeah, even Double T. They gave me their averages. Yeah. Uh, give me your averages. I know what LeBron gonna do. I mean, do. well, Corver. I mean, the bench didn't. But I mean, it, the bench didn't. But yeah, yeah but it's fine. Didn't. But everybody in the starting lineup defense. was a plus for the game. Exactly. So it doesn't matter. Even Corver played good defense. The only three he did hit was a huge three. Yeah. It came uh. one fucking year too late, but it was a huge three. Um, they, they when the the rest of the team played and they allowed. Even LeBron. if he would have hit that three last year, they still would have lost. The I mean, series. yes, so, but I mean, yes. Yes, Stop, bro. but it yes, but it would have went six instead of it being a five game series. Um, but yeah, the, the bronze teammates allowed him to be able to play four eight minutes a night because even still, you didn't see him taking the ball up the court all game. Some possessions, I actually forgot the man was even on the court. Honestly, the way Jeff Green was hooping, like because some of the places he took possessions off offensively tonight, yeah. he was able to take possessions off. I mean, when Jeff Green gives you nineteen, then I mean, then and, and even with Kevin Love not being there, basically Kevin Love was replaced tonight, nineteen and eight, exactly, literally. Literally, yeah. Um, the one thing that um Brad Stevens didn't do that I would have liked to see him do more is play Aaron Baines more. Yeah. Because uh, going because it, immediately in like the first four minutes of the game, I'm watching the game and I'm like, yo, they're gonna have trouble rebounding tonight. They're gonna have trouble rebounding tonight. Now, one thing Cleveland did do is it was a team effort with um, rebounding the ball. Uh, Green had eight, Braun had fifteen. He had ten in the first half. Uh, yeah. Our, Thompson yeah. had nine. Heel had two, JR had four. So it was a team effort, but taking out Kevin Love immediately takes away 10 rebounds. So the paint is even more food than what it always is because there's no big. They were Their best lineup was when there was uh, no big men on the court. Yeah, when I mean, they had Braun at center, basically. Yeah, and they also only got out rebound about one rebound. Uh, and even in terms of like, That's the unacceptable. Glass, they got more, but still, they got more defensive rebounds. That's unacceptable. Celtics got 11 um, um, offensive rebounds. So, I mean, look. I, I give the That's I give the Celtics a lot of credit for sticking around. I I told you. I personally I personally felt like uh, at a couple junctures throughout this series, Brad Stevens. As much as I've you know you know when we you know been watching the games, telling you about how Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, a lot of the mistakes that I see them make on the floor, I'm like three years from now you're not making that mistake. Three years from now you recognizing that. Three years from now you doing this. It's just three years too soon. But I also feel the same way about Brad Stevens because there was a few points in this game at which he didn't necessarily make what I think, uh, you know, was was good coaching decision. Number one, I still felt like every time Aaron Baines was in the game and they went to a large lineup, Cleveland could not score. Yeah. They were having a ton of trouble generating shots. Even when LeBron was switching out on Baines, it's fine because you pack in the paint with so many other people. LeBron still has got a, you know, a tougher time, and we all knew LeBron was going to pretty much play every single minute in his game. And then not only when you take out Baines, like he kept putting Terry Rozier back into the game when you could very clearly see Terry Rozier did not have a rhythm. Now, although Marcus Smart was awful in Game 7 and only put up... <laughs> Wait, nah, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, that, wait. Okay, let me finish. Let, let me finish. Let, let me finish. Wait. Although Marcus Smart was awful in game seven and only gave you four points and, and went and went one of ten from the I field, he that. was active in the game. Okay. He was playing great defense, and as I call him before, baby Rodman. When he's not on, he can do other things to affect the game that doesn't necessarily involve scoring. When Terry Rozier is not on, he's not that good of a distributor yet. He also is not that savvy of a player yet to be able to you know, generate offense for himself when he's not specifically getting plays run for him or being able to fill up the stat sheet in other areas. And you can very clearly see it when he scores four points, only has four assists and four rebounds. And he goes two of 14 and zero of 10 from three. You took 10 threes. First of all, is that, that's one thing. Just you, took 10 three, 10 threes. you took 10 threes when you could have taken, when you could have stepped in and taken five more, um, you know, two point yeah, jump shots. Too much. You also could have taken those possessions and potentially, you know, gone and made an assist. And I've said many a times this, se- um, you know, this series while watching the game that he needed to attack George's Hill, I mean, George Hill's body more. He, he spends a lot of possessions where he runs up the court 
And when he could just continue to go to the rim and attack where Kyrie Irving, when he sees George Hill, he's like, oh, I know that if I hit him with a move and go straight, look, look, I know George Hill is a good defender, but you have to apply pressure. You can't just sit out beyond the three-point arc and think that you're going to take three-pointer after three-pointer after three-pointer and be effective versus George Hill. That's not going to happen, bro. It's not going to happen. That's why he was That's why he was food versus Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons is going to play good one-on-one man defense from you, but you can take Ben Simmons off the dribble because if you got Joel Embiid floating out trying to guard Aaron Baines, Sarge can't defend the paint. Well, if you got Kevin Love out there, you got Tristan Thompson out there. Tristan Thompson's gonna be out there banging with Al Horford. Al Horford ain't finna be stretching out that far out like Joel and B can stretch out all the time. Al Horford gonna be in that 18 to 20 kind of range. So the floor spacing is a lot different than it was versus the Sixers. Because even in the Sixers, you can put Sarge on the arc, and when you run that line about that, everybody's on the arc. So you got more of the ability to try to attack those guys because those guys are weaker defenders. Well, on the Cavaliers, George Hill is the perfect, as you said, the perfect matchup for Terry Rozier. So on that point, you were correct. I will give you a credit on that. You were you were correct. But Terry Rozier has to go out as a player and get better because there were certain opportunities that he could have taken more advantage of. And I didn't feel like Brad Stevens put him in a good position. And even when he did put him back into the game, he kept putting him back into the game. And then the Cavs literally every single time Terry Rozier is in the game, they just go to that high pick and roll that they run at the top between George Hill and LeBron James. Switch LeBron James out on Terry Rozier, which I don't understand why people continue to switch uh, at the at the top of the key against LeBron James. If LeBron James is going to burn you from the three-point arc, from shooting over the top of the screen, cool. Go under it. Fight through the screen. You just automatically switching, letting LeBron dump it down to the post. That's not a good strategy, and you can very clearly see it when every single time Terry Rozier was out there on the floor, they switched to him. And then when they did it when Marcus Smart was out there, you could see that Marcus Smart was strong enough to just not let LeBron just take him to the hole and completely bully him. LeBron definitely bullied him a couple times including the one uh in the in the first half when he caught it i believe and he just literally just backed marcus smart down and went straight to the rim and turned around and laid it up but marcus smart terry rogier two completely different things and if terry rogier is not scoring he's not going to do anything else to affect the game so go ahead um, one thing i did tell you is you could bring up the tape i said i don't think you'll see a celtic besides maybe i think i said jason tatum average 20 points no celtic average 20 points Jalen Brown averaged 20 points before Game 7, but I know after Game 7 he ain't averaging 20 points in this series. Um, the, I think people don't understand how – when Cleveland attempts defensively, they were a really good defensive team. Everybody's like, oh, well, the season stats. Bro, they got a whole new team midway through the season. This is the one team where you can't look at – the history of the season and say, okay, that this is who they are. They got a whole fucking new team in December. They didn't get their starting lineup until the Toronto series. If George Hill is playing in the Indiana series, it does not go seven games. I promise you it's mm, over in like I six because you have somebody else to offset LeBron so LeBron doesn't have to get as tired. Taking the ball up court, being the point guard, is a lot of work. That means you can't take any possessions off offensively ever. Yeah, it and, takes Jalen Brown still averaged twenty. He did still average twenty. Twenty point eight. Okay, well, according to this stat, but well, yeah. but that's after six games. Well, I'm looking at ESPN. It, it got the, all the, the other lines listed. I'm just saying. Okay, well, it whatever. Says versus, it says versus Cleveland. That's all I'm saying. Whatever. Still, I told you maybe you'll see one of them, but no other one will average twenty points. I yeah. told you that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just think people need to give this Cleveland team credit.